Oh, hey, how's it going there? Welcome to my uh, new super secret squirrel, Storm Lab. And we got a lot to talk about tonight. We got a winter storm coming for the northern half of the United States, going across the entire country. And in this episode of State of the Weather Address, I'm going to talk about just that. I'm also going to talk about a couple of areas where we could see surprise snow. Okay, there could be some surprise snow and maybe more than expected in some areas. And you can follow along right with me as I use the computer model. So this is raw meteorological data. This is not the hypey, dumbed down stuff you'd see on the news. So this is for weather enthusiasts. So that being said, let's fire this episode away. Alrighty, so there's a couple of things I'm gonna use in this uh, forecast breakdown. The first is pivotalweather.com. That's where we're gonna use our models, okay? So pivotalweather.com has beautiful graphics, uh, plenty of computer model data. So we're gonna go there uh, for our model forecast. And also, if you want my winter weather super forecasting playbook, I've attached it in the link below. We're gonna be using this as well. I've got some cheat sheets. It's essentially a playbook. You can play call the weather. Okay, so that's that's attached below in the description. Just click on the link, enter your email, I'll send it off to you, and I'll send you some more uh, forecasting updates in the future. But this is about a 25 or so page cheat sheet for winter forecasting if you're interested in that. So that being said, let's get into the forecast here. Alrighty, so this is uh, the current conditions as of this video. And even if you're watching this video late, you'll probably learn a lot of forecasting techniques. I don't think a lot's gonna change in some areas. So. Uh, feel free to continue to join here. So we got some winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings for much of this area right here. This is where the models have been very confident is this inner green circle right here I just drew, where those winter storm warnings are. I think that's gonna pretty much hold. The area where there's been a lot of uh, question is this circled area kind of right here. There's gonna be some extra lift as the polar front moves south. Okay, and there could be a very narrow band that sets up. The models usually have trouble with this feature. So there's gonna be questions and I'll show you that in a second here. Alrighty, so this is uh, the current conditions as of this video, early Friday morning here. This, uh, this is actually a very cool map you can use and it's actually a computer model and has all sorts of cool features as you can see here. This is from windy.tv. Uh, yeah, it's just windy.tv or windytv.com, either or works. And you can view some very beautiful graphics here. And we're just going to briefly use this, and I'll go back to uh, pivotal weather here. But right now, you can see this is pressure we're looking at right now, okay? This is going to be surface pressure. And uh, remember, uh, with low pressure systems, you have site, <coughs> excuse me, anticyclonic flow, okay, counterclockwise. And with uh, high pressures, you have cyclonic flow, okay? And it goes like that in a clockwise direction. So we can actually find where those highs and lows are just off the wind patterns and then also the high and low pressures as you can see here this is a uh, higher pressure up here is lower i don't know why it's in reverse order but that's how it is and so these darker colors are going to be lower pressure and these orangish colors are going to be higher pressure and we can actually see a big old high pressure system right out here you can see that cyclonic flow circulate kind of you now they're kind of weaker High pressures are with the winds but you can definitely see it some pretty good flow out here and so that's good uh, with a uh, winter storm especially when you have a low pressure system moving this way into higher pressure that higher pressure is going to flow like you can see here into the lower pressure uh, out in this region uh, this has been very as you can see right here this low pressure system is kind of unorganized it's kind of linear looking and that's going to continue as it moves eastward so this is not an overly organized setup However, it's very long, elongated, and so, and there's quite a bit of flow out ahead of it, quite a bit of lift out ahead of it. You're gonna have a very long duration, large area snow that sets up in this region, okay? So it's actually gonna stack up over a while. Okay, and then the, as the jet stream moves through, you're gonna get another band of snow that develops in that area, and uh, boy, that's getting messy. But, so some areas like Wisconsin and Michigan maybe, uh, you know, north of Chicago, not probably not in the Chicago area, could see upwards 8, 10, maybe even 12 inches uh, with this system. So something to watch. And we can uh, fast forward this into the future as we go through Friday and Saturday. That high, that low pressure system moves on shore, or excuse me, it's already on shore, it moves into the plains. 
And uh, you can really see it start to wrap up here. That's where the low pressure system is. You got your cold front moving south there, your warm front probably in this area. Okay, and you're going to get some uh, moisture that moves north of that warm front. It hits that warm front and it slopes upwards. Okay, here's the warm front, kind of like that. The uh, warm moist air from the Gulf is going to kind of scoot above it and eventually there's going to be clouds Okay, as, as you get farther north and you're going to get some snow. So that's called overrunning and you're going to get a lot of snow in this area that falls from that warm front. But it's very far north of the warm front uh, with this particular setup. So that will continue uh, to move eastward and behind it, boy oh boy, we got some cold, cold weather. Uh, very high pressure. Remember with higher pressure you're going to get colder weather. Okay, you just got a bunch of air that spills southwards and there's going to be a nice cold front right there. And you could get some very cold weather potentially, you know, we're talking well below zero, maybe 20 below zero in some of the northern plains. So, and I can actually show you the temperatures. Uh, it's actually zooming out a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to look at temperatures here behind this front. And <laughs> Yeah, it gets very cold. These pink areas right here, that's corresponding with negative, about negative 30 below zero. I think that's a little bit overdone, uh, but uh, we could get some cold temperatures, probably negative 20s in that region right there. And, you know, in this blue area, anything we're in that blue area and northward, that's uh, 32 degrees and below. So very cold temperatures behind it. So let's uh, look at how much snow we're going to get in the precipitation type. What uh, Where areas are you going to get some sleet? Where are, you, where are you going to get some drizzle? All that. So let's look into that. All right, there's uh, four key factors that I use in determining a precipitation type. Number one is computer model simulated reflectivity. Number two are soundings. Number three is the column max temperature. And number four is something I call the big 540 technique. And I'll go over all of these in a second here. So let's crack right into it. So I'm going to briefly show you the first key factor in determining precipitation type and that is composite reflectivity. So I've gone to pivotalweather.com, I've clicked on models and this is the GFS. So you can figure out where your models are right here. You can zoom in regionally if you want to but that's we're just going to do nationally for now. And I've gone under surface and precipitation and hit precipitation type and rate. So we're going to go into the future here uh, on the day, Friday into Saturday. I think we'll go Saturday morning here. Actually, we'll go. We'll stop right here. We could be dealing with some freezing drizzle out in this region right here. Uh, I wouldn't say that far south, but kind of in that little box right there, southeast Nebraska, northern Kansas area, kind of right there-ish. Uh, as you can see, the radar is kind of spotty with it, but keep in mind, freezing drizzle can add up, and you can see it's pink right there. So. These uh, different colors are going to correspond to different precipitation types. When you get uh, that kind of reddish color, that's going to be freezing rain and drizzle. When you get the purplish color, that's going to be sleet. And then when you get blue to kind of a pinkish color, that's going to be snow. Okay, and this is the farther right you go, the heavier. So uh, if you look right in this little area, well, there could be some, uh, some freezing drizzle in that area. It's going to be very spotty and light. Snow above that area. Another area or another way to determine precipitation type is to look at this line right here. This is the 540 line, okay? This is measuring thickness in the atmosphere, which essentially is the average temperature in the atmosphere. And the 540 line correlates to the average temperature in the atmosphere being zero degrees. So anywhere along that line and uh, you know north typically with where you get more of these blue lines, it's gonna get colder. So anywhere along that line, the average temperature is going to be about 32 degrees in the atmosphere. Anywhere north, it's probably going to be colder. So if the average temperature is 32 degrees, you can probably bet on there being some type of snow uh, north of that line. Now sometimes you can get snow farther north of that line, like up here, or farther south, like you see right here. See, there's snow actually south of that line. Remember, it just means average temperature. You could have some, uh, some areas, you know, that uh, are probably below freezing in some areas that aren't, but the snow just hasn't quite melted all the way yet. So that being said, that's that. So let's uh, fast forward this into the future here. You can see it's a very long, narrow band, and then the storm eventually begins to organize, but by the time it does, it's already in Missouri, 
and it's going to kind of give this area some light to moderate snow but really no heavy snow with the system and uh, you can see some freezing drizzle maybe some freezing rain and sleet uh, kind of in that area kind of along i-80 and south of i-80 that's kind of where that freezing uh, precipitation corridor is going to be now the area of uncertainty with this system is this band that develops behind the low pressure system okay kind of right there ish and I'll circle it. Um, this is where there's going to be some inconsistency behind this Arctic front right here. And uh, this has been kind of moving around a little bit more. The models might have a little bit of trouble uh, dealing with this as there's going to be some localized banding in that with a large area of lift that moves into the area. And I'll show you that right here. You can go up the upper air right here and click on 500 millibar. This is uh, examining the jet stream around that time. And you can see that that lift kind of moved through. Yeah, let me click on this one, the vorticity. And uh, what's happening is there's something called positive vorticity advection, which essentially means there's a lot of, just a lot of lift in the atmosphere. And you can see it move through Kansas uh, around that time. And I'll circle it right here, this little chunk of energy. Okay, that's, that's moving uh, along that and behind that front throughout the day. It's a little bit jumpy there, throughout the day on Saturday. And so, depending where this little band sets up, okay, depending on where this band sets up, uh, you could get some snow right along that on the back side. So there'll be an initial band that kind of moves through, and then potentially another band on the back side. And the GFS, and I'll show you how much it's predicting, it's actually predicting several inches, <clears throat> well, at least two to four inches, maybe some areas of six behind that thing. Okay, and you can see it splat out, that little, little line of... Uh, one inch in that uh, green line and then in this maximum area right here as much as five or six inches so it'll be interesting i think that's a little bit overdone but there could be some localized four five inch amounts in that little area but that's been kind of jumping around a little bit and so has this little area right here so those two circled areas there's a lot of uncertainty i wouldn't trust the forecast as much in those areas as I would up here. This is where there's been quite a bit of consistency. It hasn't changed and moved, moved much at all uh, in that green area. So I think there's a pretty solid bet that most areas in that green area right here are gonna see somewhere between three and six inches with areas out here maybe seeing six to 10 inches, localized 12 inches or so. Um, and again, maybe enhanced lake effect as well near the lakes. So that's what the GFS says. Now let's look at the NAM computer model. That is a very similar story with uh, that banding, that large band of snow uh, moving through the area. It's a little bit heavier in some areas. The NAM 4KM is actually a higher res computer model, so it's very fine and detailed. And you can see that precipitation down there south of that uh, 540 line I was talking about, mostly rain, but I think this area will be freezing drizzle in southeast Nebraska, northern Kansas, northern Missouri, and southern Iowa. You'll get some drizzle, and we can actually click on soundings to find that out. And we'll click on one right here, and these things are called soundings. They measure the atmosphere in the vertical, so I've clicked on a spot in southeast Nebraska, and it shows the areas from surface up to near the tropophos, okay? And this, this uh, thing right here, is the temperature okay and this is zero degrees and the temperatures go like this okay upwards so it's uh, zero degrees celsius which is actually 32 fahrenheit so up here it's actually 32 fahrenheit whoops everywhere along that line so as you see this uh the temperature lines right here ish okay so if it's left of that you can see it's actually below zero degrees or 32 degrees fahrenheit and over here, there's like a little warm area right here where it's above. So you're gonna have snow up here, then it's gonna hit that warm layer, melt a little bit, okay? And it's very light precipitation, so it's gonna be like little tiny snowflakes and drizzle, okay? It could actually be drizzle, that's super cool. It's gonna hit that warm layer right here, kind of melt a little bit. And if it doesn't, it might just, uh, you know, originally be freezing. You know, sometimes if you get really small freezing drizzle, it can actually, be super cooled water but that's that's for another day but it could melt a little bit and then you can see the temperature near the surface is below that 32 degree line this is getting a little bit messy but it's below that 32 degree line so it's going to refreeze and it could freeze on the surface as freezing drizzle
Another tool you can use is something called column max temperature, which is the maximum temperature in the atmosphere from the surface kind of to the mid levels of the atmosphere. Okay, so this line right here is 32 degrees or uh, zero degrees Celsius. Anything along and north of that line, the maximum temperature is going to be 32 degrees or below. So you can say, hey, if the maximum temperature is that, it's going to be all snow. So anything thing north of that line almost for sure is going to be snow. This is a, the time where we had that freezing drizzle that I was looking at. And you can see in southeast Nebraska, the temperatures are between about 5 and 10 degrees Celsius. So it could the maximum temperature could be above freezing, but it could only be maybe above freezing in a little tiny area. And that appears to be the case. So if you're just to look at this and say, oh, the temperature is above freezing, it's going to be rain. It could just be a really tiny little area like we saw in that sounding. And that's appears to be the case. So that little circled area could see some freezing drizzle with that. And then anything north of that blue line, you're looking at snow. And so what does the NAM show? The NAM shows a similar story to the GFS with that northern uh, snow band right here. Okay, for this area, you're going to see somewhere between three and six inches. Some areas, again, near the Great Lakes, Wisconsin, maybe into New York, you could see closer to a foot. Now, this area, it's, I think it's actually underdoing it. Uh, it's mostly an inch or less with that secondary snow band. Usually with those little bands, you'll get somewhere between uh, you know two and six inches with those little bands. Um, so I think that's a little bit overdone. I think areas in that green circle there could probably expect somewhere between two and four inches. Uh, you know, maybe less than that as you get farther north and south of that. But that's the way it looks right now. Alrighty, so that being said, it is going to be a very cold and wintry pattern here across the northern, central, and even southern U.S. with the cold temperatures. So that being said, if you want more of these forecasting breakdowns and forecasting tutorials, go ahead and subscribe. Find that big button. So I guess we'll put it right here since there's some room. Just click on that subscribe button. And if you're on mobile, uh, click down in the description. There should be a subscribe box down there. And I'll uh, continue to make more of these videos uh, if you subscribe, and I'll continue to ch chuck these out probably once a week or so. And then also, if you want uh, that winter weather super forecasting playbook right here, it's about 25 pages, and you want to supercharge your forecasting skills, go ahead and sign up for this. Uh, it's actually in the link in the description. Just enter your email. I'll send it off right to you. It's absolutely free. And I'll also send you some other uh, updates as well, probably on a weekly basis. So that being said, go ahead and uh, subscribe right over there to your winter forecast. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you soon.